the Ottawa member for Calgary Centre. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm responding today. On June 3rd, I asked the Minister of Natural Resources in this House a question about Canada's role in providing the world with energy solutions. I pointed out that this government's failures in having Canadian resources delivered to world markets, and my question was one of long-term impact. And a result of this government's constrictive policies on Canadian resource development and delivery to world markets, Canada's role in providing the world with energy security. The minister told me I was wrong. Wrong. Wrong in pointing out that hundreds of billions of dollars of investment projects have left this country since the government was elected. Wrong that government-funded delays on resource development projects have left Canada with a reputation as an unreliable place to invest. Wrong in indicating that their flagship Impact Assessment Act, the famous Bill C-69, has led to more uncertainty in the process of having projects approved. Wrong in protesting the constraints on Canada's signature contribution to reduce worldwide CO2 emissions by exporting the world's cleanest natural gas to world markets and in the process displacing coal burning for electricity production in the developing world. Wrong in actively working to get Canadian resources to world markets like Germany, which were thrust into the arms of Russia as they filled the void left by Canada these past seven years. This led to a transfer of hundreds of billions of dollars of wealth from democratic countries to authoritarian regimes. The most problematic, of course, being the funds flow to Russia to wage war against our friends in Ukraine. The government has made this bed, and now they are saying that it would take too long for Canada to provide solutions to the obvious problem. Well, I'm not wrong. This government has failed the world by constraining clean Canadian energy development for the past seven years. Failed the developing world in providing clean Canadian energy to a growing world demanding more energy. Failed the environment by keeping Canadian natural gas from markets that have had to burn more coal and emit more CO2. Failed the democratic nations around the world by forcing them to source their energy at great expense from the world's most authoritarian regimes. We should have developed these resources for the world seven years ago. It's true. These are great policy failures for Canada and for the world. The best time to move forward was seven years ago, then six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. Madam Speaker, the best time to move forward now is right now. Let's get these things off the building blocks and let's get some things going in Canada. Let's talk about the supply disruptions. I know one of the excuses I'm going to hear is these are global supply disruptions. Well, who's causing the global supply disruptions? It's Canada. We can't get projects built. Inflation, if you think about the mounting cost of energy around the world, it's because Canada hasn't been there to provide energy to a growing world. In this past summer alone, energy that was $60 per MCF in Europe, $10 per MCF in the United States, a big difference there, was worth negative at times in Canada. We've got to get our resources to market, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade, Export Promotion, Small Business and Economic Development. So I'm going to start off with some general responses to what the member opposite has raised and then go into s some specific details. So first of all, in terms of inf investment not having occurred in the last seven years, that is categorically incorrect. The largest foreign investment in Canadian history was actually in the Kitimat facility to develop liquefied natural gas to address clients in Asia, particularly the transition off of coal for India and for China. That's a $40 billion investment in the province of British Columbia that was widely supported in this House. Uh, secondly, in terms of assisting our allies, uh, I'm sure the member opposite knows because he's a wise individual who contributes well to, into the debate in this chamber about the $2.6 billion hydrogen energy deal that was struck with the, uh, our German allies as recently as about a month and a half ago uh, off the coast of Newfoundland 
is the proposed site of the project. And there's an intense activity on hydrogen and hydrogen cell technology in his own province of Alberta, which I'm sure he's quite familiar with. Further to that, we are developing a critical mineral strategy, which has a $4 billion funding investment attached to it. That is to meet the growing needs for batteries, for vehicles, for transportation, and for batteries that will effectively uh, provide the energy source for not only vehicles on, the, in, on this continent, but clearly around the world. But uh, lastly, I would just say, our, and this is a, a, a source of dispute between our two parties, but we are not going to apologize, nor should we ever, for the fact that energy projects energy investments, uh, issues that relate to, to getting Canadian energy abroad, always need to go through an important regulatory permitting requirement, which relates to the Impact Assessment Agency. And that program is focused in on environmental sustainability, and it's also focused in on Indigenous reconciliation. Those are two things that no one should need to apologize about. Those are important priorities for our country, as they should be. With respect to what we are doing, the minister, the, the member opposite, uh, predicted it, but I am going to talk about the fact that this is a global problem. I am going to talk about the fact that what we are facing with, being faced with, is a instability as a result of a pandemic that is also coupled with the fact you have an illegal and barbaric invasion of Russia into Ukraine that is destabilizing Europe and our European allies. We are there to support our European allies. That is critical. We'll continue to support our European allies with good Canadian clean energy. We're always willing to entertain projects that meet our permitting process, that meet our sustainability requirements, that meet our ambitious targets that are being discussed right now as we speak at COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, because those are very, very important. Um, the, with respect to what's been happening in, uh, in, in uh, Europe, what we need to do is uh, understand the impact that the conflict has had of Russian invasions in Ukraine, of Ukraine on Ukrainians themselves, thousands of whom have been killed or wounded, but also understanding that what we've been doing is working consistently on energy projects and a number of other projects to assist our allies and work in conjunction with our American partners. And that includes sanctions, aid, and encouragement for the, uh, of, of Ukrainians vis-a-vis -vis the Ukrainian diaspora here. But the member opposite would also know, and I'm sure he appreciates this, is that what we've done is to meet some of those needs, we've increased our oil and gas exports this year by the equivalent of 300,000 barrels per day. That is a direct attempt to meet some of the energy needs that are required by our allies. It's also important to note that this unjustified invasion has been a wake-up call to the world that what they need is to move away from the very authoritarian actors that he mentioned and move towards more stable sources and stable locations for energy. Canada is ready, willing, and able to meet those needs, but we will meet, it, meet them in an environmentally sustainable manner that also addresses things like Indigenous reconciliation. Thank you, Madam. The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I appreciate my colleague saying those words, but those are just words, and I tell them again that he is making some of that stuff up, as so many of his members on the other side of the House do. And the actual fact around LNG development in Canada, we had 18 on the West Coast and seven on the East Coast. We were going to develop LNG in this country. Now we have one being developed with three more that potentially might get developed. Seven years later, in the interim, the United States has developed seven fully developed exporting to the world. 20 more in the process of being approved. We are laggard. We have punished the world by not getting our environmental solutions to the world. We're also a better producer of this resource. So any feigned attempt to pretend that we are actually moving forward on this from his government's perspective on a project that was approved long before his government actually got into office and it's taken this long to get to, to actual development is pretense. And I, would, I need to call it out for what it is. I've got lots more to say, Madam Speaker, but I know my time is limited. So thank you very much. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, uh, unsurprisingly, Madam Speaker, we've got a strong difference of opinion on this side of the House. Uh, one is not making stuff up. I don't do that personally. Our government doesn't do that as a matter of course. Um, what I'm talking about is investments that are being made in energy in this country, investments that are made, being made towards sustainable, green and cleaner energy. Those include things like renewables, solar, wind and geothermal. Those include even initiatives to export Canadian know-how in nuclear technology around the planet. The member in his first intervention talked about uh, the unfortunate situation where the Germans are burning coal. That is a very unfortunate situation. I would point out to the member that part of the, Germany's reliance upon coal is having been overly reliant on Russian natural gas and secondly having turned their back on their own nuclear program. That is not something we've done in Ontario. Our phase out of coal was actually 
actually propelled by our substantive nuclear assets in the province of Ontario. That is what we are hoping to do with the rest of the country in terms of the phase out of coal in places like Alberta and New Brunswick, and that is what we will continue to do with our European allies to meet their energy needs. Thank you, Madam Speaker.